Hello and welcome to video number four. This is going to be the note taking methods and strategies. So we've gone from videos one, two, three, which has helped set the stage for this particular video. Now this particular video is pretty simple. So do not take the simplicity as something that does not work because it actually works wonders. Now, if you can apply this stuff, this is really going to help you out. And then I'm going to show you other tools that you can use to kind of speed the process up. But before we talk about the tools, it's going to be necessary and crucial to talk about the strategies themselves. Now, these are actually note taking strategies that work really, really well. So basically to start things out for short reminders that you need to see visually to help you remember post-it notes are effective. If you're not aware what post-it notes are, these little notes, sticky notes that you can paste to, you know, the wall, to your laptop and things like that. There are even post-it notes via a lot of mobile phones. So if you rather take, you know, notes via your mobile phone, that's another route that you can go. Now, if you're sitting down while listening and what you need to do in to take bullet points or a checklist is to use a pen and paper because pen and paper is really, really effective. And the reason why is because studies show that we tend to remember more if we actually write things down. And the reason being is because we are actually applying and taking action and our mind and our hand is actually working together and therefore it's just easy to remember. So that's just something to keep in mind that if you want to retain the knowledge, make sure that you use a pen or a pencil and paper. Now keep in mind on the flip side, if your notes have online materials, mobile devices can actually be more helpful since what you can do is you can actually copy and paste information from your devices to your notes. Now make sure that as you're doing this, that you do not copy and paste every single thing. You want to make sure that you are being selective and you want to make sure that you know your end goal so that you either need to use the notes to create infographics, to create presentations or whatever. As long as you understand and you know that is your end goal, then taking notes and being selective about the notes that you take is going to be much more powerful. So moving along, I want to talk about mobile applications that we actually recommend and are available to you for taking notes and keeping track of them. Now, I'm not going to dive too much into these just yet because I want to cover the strategies first, but we'll cover these in the videos after this particular video. Sana which is a great note taking application. Then we have Evernote, which is a very popular one. And I wanted to briefly touch base on those, but let's jump right back into the note taking strategies. Now we've got key points, keywords, and references. Those are three categories that you really need to focus in on. And then of course we have reminders. Now you got to really think about this. Taking notes is not the same as transcribing. Transcribing was a thing that we all mostly did back in the day. We jot all the notes down. We jot everything that the teacher said down or the webinar speaker or whatever. That was the past. This is now you are no longer doing this, no longer jotting every single word down because all that's going to do is it's going to overwhelm your brain and you do not want that. So it's important to really just jot down the essential parts. And it's really helpful to break it down into these three categories, which I'm about to talk about. So we've got key points and these are, you know, focus points of the topic, such as major headings or titles or main ideas. So rather than jotting down every single thing, because your brain, retains 25 to 50% of knowledge, you can think, okay, this is what we talked about. The main heading was this. Uh, okay. I got an idea. 
of this. So because your brain still retains a good amount of knowledge, as long as you can refer back to that without overwhelming your brain, your brain is going to be able to retain that knowledge. If you overwhelm it, however, that's going to be a different story. So the second category is keywords. So it's important to record keywords relating to a specific key point. So starting with the key points that we talked about earlier, you want to find the keywords relating to specific key points to help you remember and identify the content or direction of the topic. So keywords are crucial because they help us remember specific areas, specific topics, the direction in which a speaker took, maybe they were talking, talking, and they decided to talk, you know, about something else. Those keywords will help direct your brain back to its memory source. And then we talk about reference. References, you're able to add a reference or where you can find more detailed information about key points or keywords. So, so this allows you to kind of reach back, connect back to the key points and back to the keywords. Now, in practical application here, a reference could be a title and a page of a book, a site URL, or a quote by a person. So let's say, for example, that you're taking notes, you can add the key point, you can add the keywords, but if the speaker says, well, you need to refer back to page 55, you know, or, or if they say, okay, so let's switch to chapter three and page 55. And then he spends all this time covering that. So rather than, you know, jotting everything down, you can write down page 55 and refer back to it later on. It just makes your life a lot easier when you get to refer back to things rather than, you know, taking the whole notes of that page and this and that. Now I want to talk about some effective methods that you can apply right now and immediately. Number one is to outline by adding indentations, bullet points, numbering, and letters. The reason why these things can be effective is it segregates the main ideas, keywords, references, and reminders. Now, this is a lot easier when you have, you know, electronic device, a mobile phone or a laptop and so forth, because you're easily indenting things because when you go back and review your notes, guess what happens? You're actually scanning the document and then the indentation, the bullet points, the bold letters, the numbering and so forth actually helps stand out. Now, the most important or major points will be on the left most side going more specific per indent. So what's going to happen is if you do it this way and you make sure that your major points your key points and everything are on the left hand side, then, and then you have your indentations, then it's going to stand out and you'll know, okay, that's a heading, that's a key point, that's a keyword and so forth. So you're able to help your brain categorize three different categories here. And this works really well if you are familiar with the topic or if the presentation is also in outline form because you're scanning it, you're able to detect these specific categories. But if you're using a tablet or any other online app, which you can easily edit, that can work really well as well. So that way you don't really have to convert it from text to electronic. Now let's talk about reminders. Reminders are always good to have. And these are, you know, often your personal observation that, you know, can add more context to your notes. So if you have something like a personal observation, that you notice during the lecture itself, you add those reminders, that's actually going to help later on because you can be reminded that something happened or something that they said and stuff like that. Now, an example of a reminder could be also red flags or possible questions that you have about a certain topic. 
And what you can also do is you can also flag the topic by adding a question mark. If you feel maybe you need to look at it more later or do more research or even refer back to the lecturer, speaker, or instructor. That way you know that you can go back later on. Now let's talk about columns. Columns will basically allow for easy filtering, sorting, and scanning notes. So if you look at here, if you have your key points and your everything categorized and everything like that, it's just going to make life a lot easier when you're going back to scan the notes. Yes, it may be, you know, a little bit of a pain in the butt at the moment, but I can guarantee you it's going to make your life a lot easier and you're just going to be a lot happier. Plus it works really well in an online format. Next thing and third thing we have mapping. So with mapping, you can start your outline from the top or the left, going from more general idea to a more specific as you go down the tree or as the ideas branch out. So if you think about something like a genealogy tree or something, you start from the top and you have a general idea and you move more specific down as you go. That's another method that you can use for note taking is to map things out or you can use something like a mind map to map things out. That way, when you look at something, you understand the process better, especially if, you know, on the webinar, on the lecture, they're talking about specific strategies, process, some sort of step-by-step -step form of, you know, lecture. You can take that, map it out, and that way, when you come back to it, you know exactly, okay, step-by-step, -step, they start from here, they go to here, they go to there and so forth. And this works really, really well with visual type folks. Now, if you think about it, there's three different types of main learning types. There's visual, there's kinesthetic, and of course, there's auditory. Now, visual type people, they prefer to actually see things and then do it. Kinesthetic type learners prefer to actually do it while they're actually hearing it and so forth. Now, sometimes you can't do that, but by actually doing something, using your hands with kinesthetic people will actually remember it better. Now, auditory, taking notes and taking textual notes and things like that is actually more effective as well. So mapping really, really helps. And it works really well if you have a little idea of how the topic is going to be presented, and then of course you break it down and be more specific. So that brings us to video number five, where we will be talking about Asana's exciting feature.